Here's my snowmobile storage lift. I love this thing. I, I, it's safe to say to me that this is the best lift ever for a snowmobile. Um, basically, it's a, it's a winch up there that pulls, it, pulls up the two arms that lifts the sled up and down. Very easy to put the sled on, take it off. Right now it's holding a light vintage sled, but this thing can hold the heaviest of four stroke turbos, no problem. I have so many people asking me about this lift and how to, how to make it, what are the dimensions. Uh, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to, to take, take you through this, this lift of dimensions, what you need to do to make one. I'm gonna be moving this lift from that location to the back corner. So I think now's the perfect time to show you how this thing works. Basically a winch has an electronic uh, remote control here. You just press up and down to lower it and bring it up. Obviously we're gonna slide this sled out of here. So basically here's the lift without a sled on it. I put these pool noodles on the bars just to add some cushioning. So it's two pieces. It's the frame and then you have this carrier, carrier section which goes up and down attached to the winch. All right, let's get a tape measure and I'll go through the dimensions of this thing. Okay, so let's start with the, the runners here. This is just solid unistrut. There's no steel solid, there's no holes in it. Um, I think you can buy them in a 12 foot length or 10 foot length and you just cut them down to your wall size. So I think this is a inch and five eighths unistrut. Yeah, inch and five eighths unistrut steel and then the cross beams are just a two inch c channel u channel welded across so let's take a, a measurement this one in particular is just over 41 inches no right on 41 inches and then you weld in the cross members the center distance every two feet all the way up and then at the top this last section it's just a one inch square tubing welded to hold a winch so that I mean that's very basic you can make anything to hold your own winch design up there uh, the top is a, a two inch channel and basically the frame is like that very simple mounting it to the wall we use 
structural screws. I'll show you what I use right into the studs. So these are a 16 inch center. So you can see I hit three studs there. Another way to do it is to, on your studs, you tie two by sixes to all three studs and then you can drill in at any location. But I was able to line up the studs and I got some down here, here, there, and there. And this thing is solid. That's the only thing holding it. The legs are actually sitting on the floor, just so you got the force pushing downward on the floor. Now let's look at the, the carrier. This is going to be uh, the harder thing to make. And basically this is made by one inch by two inch tubing. You make your, uh, your arms that hold the sled. Those are 40 inches. You got two of them. And then this height here is uh, 36 inches. We got a crossbar here, 20 inches from the bottom. And then for support, we have these angles welded in. And as you can see here, you got a eyelet, 5 eighths eyelet, uh, with the winch up there. And it's uh, the winch is fed back to the top to get double the force so that I have a 13 and a 13 20 pound winch and this does does the job fine those are you can find a cheap princess arbor princess auto harbor freight um now let's look at the the hardest thing to do i would say and find is these bearings these linear bearings so uh, you would have to look at some industrial supply store i believe i even saw them on amazon and you just need some linear bearings that run in a five a one and five eighths unistrut and I, the ones on amazon i've seen the rollers are are common because they go on the unistrut but this attachment is different so you would just have to whatever you buy find a way to attach your carrier to these linear bearings and we see we have uh Two of them there on each side, so four in total. That might be one of the most expensive parts of this, this job if you want to get high quality bearings. Well, I'm going to move this thing over, attach it to the wall, re reorganize my garage. I hope this helps you out building your own sled lift. Like I said, I've been using this for five years. It's solid. It doesn't even move. It's so simple to use. It's it uh, just make clears up space, puts your sled up in the air. You can even put a tabletop on this if you want and put the sled right on there or, or an ATV or whatnot. Let me know if you are going to tackle this job and how you like it. Let's try to do this without smashing a twister. So basically I have uh, some holes already drilled here that I'm going to screw right into the studs. Now I've had it in that location so these holes are a little off for these studs. But you can line it up and then pre-drill your holes for your studs. So I'm going to hit this stud, this stud, and this one. Uh, I'm going to go on an angle. That's what I had before, an angle, and it was working fine. Let me show you the, the screws I use. So this is it. This is a structural screw. It's called lock line. There's the box. Very strong. Like I said, this has been up for many years and it didn't move. And I'm just gonna line it up, put the plywood back, and then screw this to the wall, and the job's done.
There you have it. The lift is ready to be used again. Now I just got to reorganize this garage. It would have been a lot easier if I didn't have anything in here. To lift the sled up, you just got to drag the sled on top of the, the two arms and lift it up. Up and out of the way. The best sled lift out there. <laughs>